Hello, you're watching Avenue X, and this is my final review video on the drama Yin Yan Guan Shan, A Journey to Love. It really hasn't been that long since I made my first impression video on this drama. I watched the drama at the first moment when all the episodes got released, and I've been mulling over what I want to talk about regarding this drama because there's a lot to talk about. Overall, I have still a very positive response to this drama, I'll give it a 2.5 goat mine, mainly because the last bit of the drama does have quite a bit problems and it would be like on my conscience if I just mark it up to 3 goat mine, but I don't regret any time I've invested in this drama and overall I still think it's the best period drama of 2023 from Chinese drama land. I'm gonna first talk about things that actually happened outside of the drama, then I'm gonna talk about the drama itself, the positive things and the problematic things first. Things that happened outside of the drama that I really have a lot to vent about. This probably doesn't really affect any international audiences who do not know what goes on within China. Domestic market, domestic social media, pretty vicious coordinated attack on this drama, mainly from two angles. And I also noticed there's a very clear pattern repeating from last year. If you remember, at the end of last year, around November, we also had a contemporary drama airing, Ai the Arba Ding Lui, led by Xu Kai and Yang Ming. So many people kind of have exactly the same points. They rant about this drama and it all aims specifically at the actress Yang Ming. It definitely is not spontaneous. It's basically something that people spent money to have it happen online for whatever they want to achieve. This year, Yin Yan Guan Shan, wow, truly, truly disgusts me because it's just so heavy handed. If you actually spend time and if you have a normal functioning brain, you go in and watch this drama, I don't see any reasonable and logical people would even interpret the plot, the characters, a lot of things in the drama in the way that those videos or those posts would rant about the drama. So they basically make up things that the drama actually doesn't do or really doesn't have a problem. And then they manipulate that completely in their own way and turn that into the type of getting traffic for themselves. So whether it's video accounts or uh, social media, other accounts based on text, it's laughable because it's completely not based on fact. And mainly the hate videos and hate posts, literally hate, not just like criticism, it's hate on this drama come from two different angles. Angle one is the lowest possible you can do, attacking Liu Yunning as a male lead, being the ugly person for an idol period drama. Yes, this drama does get categorized even by IT itself as idol period drama because you really cannot say it's a serious historical, it's fictional. Okay, and it's mainly focused on a lead couple's relationship. So yes, it is romance based period drama, but it's very different from average idol drama where only two people are falling in love and nothing else is important. And if you look at the text, of the drama and if, like I said, people spend time watching this drama, they will see at no point in the story that this male lead has been categorized by anybody in the drama as the super good looking guy. The super good looking guy is Fang Yilun's role. He takes the beautiful boy role in the drama and he would say that and everybody would agree because they casted him because he's good looking. So for this male lead character, the first and foremost thing about him is not his good looking. And even within the drama, he would rant about himself of being not good looking and female lead would actually say you have such tiny eyes. So I'm just saying, if you actually have spent time watching the drama, the whole point of him being an ugly man playing a good looking man doesn't stand on any ground because he never played a good looking man. Then for the rest, where people using the most vicious and obscene language to attack this actor. That type of thing just gets me really angry. You're born with a face that comes from your DNA and there's something you can do about it, but there's a limit. So attacking somebody for their looks, it's not criticism. It's basically showing that you're uneducated, uncivilized and unlearned and your mother didn't give you enough beat ups when you were young. And every day, I kid you not, I open social media, every platform, every time you just refresh, you get at least one or two. That is ranting about how ugly Liu Yuning looks and the language that's being used on him is like he looks like a turtle, he looks like a mouse, a rat. I'm like what the heck is going on? And I have blocked so many accounts just because they use that angle and use those very intentionally designed language and even thumbnail to insult this actor. What has he ever done wrong to you to deserve that? Number two, the other thing that attacks this drama <laughs> comes from an angle that makes somebody who's worked in drama making laugh. And there are plenty of stupid people who would follow this type of opinions because they don't know what it's really like making drama either. They argue that this drama intentionally weakened the female lead character. It should be a big female lead 
story where it should only be Ren Ruyi being the real people and everybody else should just be a two-dimensional printout. And I don't know like first where that idea comes from, like that constitutes a good story. People count to minutes and seconds about how long this character shows up in one episode on screen and use that to argue that she has been weakened because too much time are given to male lead or other characters. And then <laughs> there's this leaked out version of the original script of this drama, I kid you not, on social media, where it takes out a couple of essential scenes in this drama and it compares on paper that version to the current drama version where it actually gets played out by real human beings and argue that the original script is so much superior and it gives all the highlight points to the female lead character, whereas the current version that you actually see finally get delivered is the altered version where the female lead gets weakened and all the time and all the beautiful epic lines she should be speaking are taken away. I laughed so much, oh my god. I looked at the so-called leaked out script from somebody who can write essays to A plus in philosophy class in two languages. I'm just telling you, the original quotation mark version is so much less than the current drama version. When it comes to those couple of scenes that they picked out saying the female lead has been weakened, the original version reads like somebody is a wooden pole, stand there claiming and preaching, long paragraphs talking about things that doesn't sound like daily human language, and it's filled with ideas and concepts and slogans, and it doesn't read like between two lovers, they're talking and discussing, telling what their true feelings about something are. It's as if this character is talking to the other character who's supposed to be the lover as their enemy, as their political election debate opposite. And it totally doesn't flow as an organic dialogue between two characters. And it's far, 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 far inferior to the eventual version we see. So I laugh at first that somebody would think the original version is better. It clearly shows they have no idea about how to write things and thankfully they're not working in the industry otherwise we'll have even worse crappier dramas. Number two, I laugh at the fact that there is this belief that there is an original version of the script. It clearly is coming from people who have never worked in this industry. From the first draft you write to the final lockdown draft of anything, it easily goes through 20, 30, 50, 100, 200 versions. Particularly in Chinese drama land, so many people have their hands on a drama. There's never an original version or definitive version. It's always a working version until the final cut gets released. That's the final version. Everything between is something that's like a field of potentiality. So for people to believe that there's an original version, it just shows that they have no idea what they're talking about. And even when you're shooting a drama, easily you change lines on set and eventually when you are in the post-production editing room, you're still gonna cut stuff off or manipulate the orders because you need this and that. Using that stupid God knows whether it's real or not fake original script as an argument saying that this drama intentionally weakens the female lead is just feeding into the popular argument online about the gender opposite, about the polarization of male and female. The very vicious and obvious intention to create more wars because they know this is popular, it will get more traffic to benefit from that. To me is just absolutely despicable, obscene, pathetic, and shameless. And they stupidly forgot the fact that this drama is not based on an IP. It doesn't have original novel to go off on. It's a complete original creation by the scriptwriter. So upon what foundation can your argument stand that you think this is a big female lead drama? I'm happy on one hand that most of the people who are reasonable and rational enough, they actually went in watching the drama minute by minute and have their own opinion about it, don't really fall for this type of argument online. And a lot of people are frankly baffled by the hate to this drama and how this drama gets belittled online where it really hasn't done any of those things they claim. I have to speak it out because I have this channel and I just want to share it with you if you don't know about this and well, now you know. It's going on, it has been happening since day one of the airing of the drama and even till today when all the episodes are aired, I still see new videos get made, get pushed to my feed, still repeating those old arguments that are completely unfounded. I feel it's just very pathetic, a situation. It's a lot of 
information and misinformation. I could only say that if people have been influenced by the huge amount of content and hate put out on this drama online, and therefore before they even tried it out themselves, decided to judge it or give it a verdict, I could only say that it's their misfortune. Because this is overall a very, very good drama still, although it has definitely things it can improve on. So now let's move on to the second point, all the good things about Yin Yang Guanshan and why I give it a very high rating and why I firmly, firmly stand on my own opinion that this is the best period drama 2023 in Chinese drama land. So good things about this drama. Point number one, music. I have to emphasize that again. By the end of the drama, we've got 80. <laughs> like if you look at the album, tunes that's related to this drama that are written for this drama, including the songs, including bigger orchestra, huge music, also like tiny ones, like 40 seconds per tiny tune. It's an epic journey of music. It's mainly done by Chen Xueran with the OST. And I'm so impressed by the fact that at the beginning of this year, if you still remember Three Body, Chen Xueran was responsible for writing the music for that drama and it adds up to like 75. By the end of the year, we have him coming out again and written for this drama that wraps up the year. Also like 80 tunes together, he wrote like about 55 or 60 of the whole thing, which is this guy is on steroids. Okay. He also writes music for many other dramas, not just these two. And what are you made of? It's beyond the amount of work that's expected or required for any Chinese drama of 40 episodes. Number two, the things I appreciate most apart from the music is the characters, lead and supporting roles. This drama, if you have to divide categories of how important characters are, I would do it this way. Male, female lead, number one, tier one for sure. Then for the second tier, I would put Li Tongguang, this character, Yang Yin, this character, and Yu Shizan. Yu Shizan is like squeezing in <laughs> as the second tier, most important supporting roles. And then the third tier, you would have the Xiao Fen Dui, the team of Liu Daotang, including Yuan Lu, Qian Zhao, Sun Lang, even Deng Hui. And arguably you can put Chu Yue in it, but she is like lesser than them, but more than others. Then you have the last tier, which are the very, very supporting, but important roles such as Du Zhang Shi and Empress Huang Hou. And I'd say every tier gets so much attention and love. This is one of those rare, rare Chinese dramas where every character, when they have something to say and some function in the storytelling gets respected and gets developed and have their personal, relatively highlight moment. My favorite character in this drama are actually not the two leads. They're not bad, but they're very expected. Usually that's the case. It's actually much harder to write. Very memorable and different main characters. But for me, the favorite character is Yang Ying, played by He Lan Dou, the princess. I think this character is one of the best female character I've seen in period dramas for a long time. She's a full character who has a clear arc, very clear progression bar. Every scene she's in pushes her characters slightly forward on her journey of becoming the final version of this princess. Not even one scene or one moment is wasted. She gets the best highlight moments in the drama the best acting moments, the greatest character development, and the cleanest and clearest development line I have seen in years for female role. Also, it's been played by He Lan Dou, who is such a perfect casting choice for this role. I literally cannot think of any other people playing this role would be that convincing when she is pretending to be a man and then later becoming a woman. Even just for Yang Ying, this character and how it fully gets developed in this drama, I'd put this drama on a special platform for me, at least personally, in the future to refer to and to remember and to appreciate. The other character I'd say has the perfect 100% perfect casting and delivery would be Yu Shizan played by Fang Yi Lun. Appearance-wise, perfect for this role. His acting and his style and even his voice, the way he talks is just also somebody on paper jumping out. The only thing I feel a little bit sorry about this role is he doesn't get that much screen time. Earlier on, you think he would actually be the male second, the guy who has the most screen time second to Niu Yuanzhou. Then later you realize not the case, actually Li Tongguang gets more screen time. If they gave him more time and develop him more, he would be an even more interesting screen presence. But with what we have, he's perfect. So these two characters to me are the most successful character. And then I also highly appreciate the Xiao Fen Dui characters, Qian Zhao, Sun Lang, Yuan Lu. Qian Zhao and Sun Lang don't have a lot of them developed until later of the story. Earlier on, they're just there. You kind of know, you don't even remember their name or their face. As story goes on, you see them being pulled out more and more clearer. And by the end, when things happen, yeah, you, you, you truly feel they have complete their journey as 
supporting roles. And interesting enough, for example, for the actor Wang Yizhe, he's already been in many other things, and he's even had his male lead drama before. Yet that drama, because the drama is not good enough, the story is not good enough, it leaves hardly any impression to people. So people look at this drama, they don't even realize that he was the lead of that drama because that drama is not good enough. And you see, like as a supporting role, who probably has what the seventh or the sixth most screen time in the whole drama, he gets noticed so much more. Playing such a tiny quotation mark role. In a drama that actually is good, it shows again. If you're a hardworking actor and you get a good role, even when it's minor, it's not the main lead. If the story is good, the drama is good, it adds so much to your career and your recognizable sort of quality among the general audience. Then acting in ten dramas and as the lead, but those dramas are crappy. Then I have to say Chen Youwei. You've known him probably if you watch a lot of Chinese dramas, mostly as a laughing stock. Unfortunately, when he was in the variety show that gets criticized by Er Dongsheng of him playing Ye Hua, that's completely just like fallen in pieces. And I feel in a way bad for him because. He put himself out there and then being laughed at by the entire nation. In this drama, his role is so suitable for him, perfect for him to play. Look-wise, age-wise, although he's still not a good enough actor, his line delivery has a lot of problem. But he did it himself in this drama. His mouth movement <laughs> needs to get sorted out. Like he has this thing when he talks that just often makes people want to focus their eyes completely on his teeth. Sometimes you can't do anything, right? You are just born with those muscles. So I wouldn't say he would be in any way flourish, at least based on what he can do now as a main lead actor. But as As a supporting role, this drama actually shows the possibility of this actor playing important supporting role that suits him, that can actually be very good. I think nobody would have anything to complain about Yuan Lu this role. And by the end, when his character finishes his full arc, everybody is like crying, like my eyeballs are like falling out when that scene happened. And he plays it in this way that is just I cannot imagine a better. Outcome for this actor to play this role. He already did his hundred percent best. Maybe if they cast a different person, it could also be good. But for Chen Youwei, I'm completely surprised by the end result. And even to the super super sidelined supporting roles, such as Chen Duling's guest starring literally as the queen of one of the country or、uh, the Du Zhang Shi actor who actually played very well known characters when he was younger in Dramaland, little screen time. But every scene, every moment, every shot when they are present is for some good purpose of the storytelling. What else can I say? I am so appreciative of on different importance level all the roles gets very good treatment, very full development line and very good casting overall to have this far better than I expected result. So. Characters, those great characters, is another highlight point of this drama. And I think over time, when this drama stays online for a couple of years, when people look back, they're gonna appreciate it more and more. Number three, although this is still categorized as an idol pair drama, I'd say it moves. Quite a few steps beyond just being an idol drama. It has ambition, although I wouldn't say it's perfectly realized. It wants to tie onto the bigger themes, the bigger world stuff, history, wars, responsibilities of rulers, and how you actualize your personal value in the big system of things. Right, what you believe and what the idealized world is, and versus the reality and the struggles of the ordinary person, whether you are talented or not. It has a lot of big. Bigger, deeper, more complicated things that are in the dialogues and in the plot, in the characters. You have so many great conversation scenes that between those characters that are situated in the plot, but also looking forward, looking in ways that make the audiences stop and think for a second. And that's already a very rare thing in idol dramas. It does have a lot of 21st century contemporary value that we usually don't see in the typical、uh, idol dramas. I love the fact that. That every character in this drama are being treated as a thinking individual, having their own angles and their particular background, creating their ways of thinking, but still respected people. Complicated, contradictory, and unclear sometimes themselves about what they're thinking. So they need to talk, they need to listen to what the other person is saying, and they need to think and need to adjust their directions. They're moving on the line. They think they're doing something, but then they have conversations with other people, and then they realize, oh, there's a blind spot of my actions, and I actually don't really know myself. It 
constantly gives characters opportunities to be a real person. I think because of the attempt to create complicated and in many ways not that clear functioning roles, it also becomes a way that the people intentionally want to attack this drama to use as a weapon saying that they're not big female lead enough, they are not perfect male lead enough and I find that's funny and I find the actual value of the drama lies in the things that these people criticize it as its weakness. No, I think it's its strength. It's very daring and ballsy for period idol drama writers to write such complicated characters who often would get misinterpreted by very binary and polarizing thinking people. I haven't seen another drama that has done this in this category this year in drama land, therefore this is a special period drama. Finally, let's move on to the point that's also very important about what's not perfect about this drama and why it's not three gold mine and I also have problems and I did get angry about. And there are really just two major points. Point number one, pacing not well controlled. Judging by the final airing result, I'd say it most likely happened this way. We have to finish it within 40 episodes. We have more content actually than 40 episodes. How are we gonna get it? We're gonna cut things short here and there so that it fits. But where do we cut it? Do we destroy the earlier parts of the drama where there are a lot of details, a lot of character build-up moments, a lot of conversations that are very beautifully done, beautifully acted, and definitely are gonna make people love it? Do we cut those down so that the later parts that have all the politics and conspiracies and finally wrapping up the big war thing give more space to that? Or do we still keep the earlier parts that are juicy? And then by the end, when we need to speed up, we just close our eyes and then clench our teeth and pretend we're not making a mistake and just cut, 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 cut so that things can get finished. They pick the second one. From the maximized benefit angle, I understand that and you know, making money. And they picked the making money and I cannot blame them for it because it's a business at the end of the day. First 34 episodes, cutting on the point where they're about to start paying money to see the last six episodes, it still was pretty stable. Although in episode 27, there's this one PPT, what we call PowerPoint moment, where there's a whole conspiracy of how to put down the bad crown prince of that country, probably a two episodes plot condensed down to one minute. It's literally become PowerPoint and it shocked a lot of people. That's the first sign of their cutting things down, condensing them down so that they can fit things in 40 episodes. Then by the last, from 35 to 40, things speed up like crazy. There's no build up. There's no connective tissue between plot point. Things just happen one after another after another. You don't see the reasoning of why it happens. It just hits. People die, this person die, that person die. We successfully conspirators and then eventually we're arriving at the war and having the sacrifice and boom, everybody dies and <laughs> it ends. Now, all those plots can happen, but how you get there has a lot of problems. They cut out too much progress and process, therefore things becomes very much because the writer says so situation. I don't think this writer is really that bad that she wouldn't be able to actually make everything reasonable because if you look at the early plots, it all worked out pretty well. You cannot suddenly have a intelligence drop in that way. The only thing I can think of is they try to maximize their benefit, making the early parts look so juicy and good so that people go in and watch it and by the end they want to pay the money and when they pay the money, they see, oh, what the heck happens at the end? It's not ideal. It's not the best that audiences can get. And in a way, you can argue that whether that is a very questionable way of doing things. In the early parts, the emperor of the male lead country, Wu Guo, who was a selfish, egoic, unforgiving, and incapable person ruling a kingdom with really no clear process, suddenly becomes a good guy. Suddenly he realized he's wrong, suddenly admits to his own crime, becomes this almost holy saint person, and then get assassinated. You also have that bad prince of Wu who basically had no build up at all, like suggesting he's the bad guy. He hardly had any screen time before when the moment happens, suddenly showed up as the bad guy and then immediately <laughs> get defeated by the female lead and male lead who kind of just like space jumped, <laughs> showed up in the palace after they've traveled how long and like no any explanation of how they got there. They just showed up and destroyed that and tell you that they actually anticipated it before it even happened. But again, without telling you exactly how they do it. And then the last episode, they need to just basically kill the two leads. <laughs> I'm like, you're rushing as if there's a dog with rabies chasing you, All right? The whole plot just went out of control and just boom, 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 explosion, die. And let alone the last scene where Chu Yue is on this prairie and meet 
meeting this boy, right? I know it probably is happening in her head. And you can set up like it's years later and she's a mid-aged woman who's worked her whole life for a country and kingdom and she's old and she's getting sick. So she's dying and she's at this place and she sees this, all her good friends that she's been thinking of for the last couple of decades now come to her to pick her up. Like it could actually be a really movie moment, but they didn't set up that scene to basically tell you that, okay, this is her dream. She's dying and she's seeing all her old friends coming. So it got really weird and the CG was like really bad too. It was so rushing and hasty and not having any connective tissue towards the last bit of the drama that all the good feelings you've built up for the drama up to that point kind of gets completely exhausted and used up. And if it wasn't for the earlier parts, the how much you love those characters, you probably wouldn't be able to sit through it in the future. I just hope dramas don't do this because it's very exhausting on the audiences and it's basically betraying the audiences the time and love they've invested in the earlier parts of your story. If you do that over and over, we're gonna all become a lot more cynical. We're not gonna invest our love in it until we see the last episode. And overall, it just builds the mistrust. It's just a very gloomy and dark outlook where everybody is super suspicious and doubtful of other person's intention. Now, the second point I wanna talk about Again, a lot of that is my guess, but I think it's based on good ground. It's not completely just like make it up, which is I think a lot of the uncomfortable feeling I get watching the drama and the plot that doesn't quite work out and the broken down logic of things towards the end happens because the character Li Tongguang, played by Chang Hwasen, hasn't been worked out. On script level, it's been written with so many problems that eventually causes everything that links to this character, the important plot, also falls. And I very much doubt this is completely the scriptwriter's fault. Because if you look at this drama, every other character, main or supporting, have a very clean and clear development line and they don't have this problem. And all this type of problem happens concentrated on this one world, Li Tongguang, where in this whole drama, he has the third most screen time, I think. Pretty easy to spot that. Male lead, female lead, you have then him. He's in from the beginning. He's linked to all the political conspiracies, you know, the power fight and the kingdom future of the story. He's so essential. But then he's been written with such an unclear development line. Because he's the male disciple of the female lead. And then He Lando's princess is the female disciple of the female lead. So they are on very similar level and functioning as well. So let's compare these two characters. See the stark contrast. Princess Rao has such a clear development line, such a clear arc. It's like every time she shows up, you can see an invisible pro progress bar on this character. She's that 10% princess, ultimate version, 20%, 30%, everything she achieves, every big epic thing she does moves that forward. Then you look at Li Tongguang's character in comparison. He has so much screen time, but he's a muddy pool of not knowing what's going on. He has no clear progress bar. In this scene, he's 10%, final version. In next scene, he's 50%. In next scene, he goes back to 35%. One scene, he seems to come back to normal and he has moved on on his sort of psychological development of realizing what he has is a type of obsession but not love and moving on to his becoming the full man who owns his own everything. One thing he's already like moving on that line, next thing he goes back 10 steps, two episodes before the last episode. He almost is like completely should be arriving at the full version of him, suddenly decides I'm gonna steal my shifu and force marriage on her. What? And they forgot that at episode one when he shows up, he is the young general who managed to capture the other kingdom's emperor. So he must be really good at fighting and battling and war person strategy wise. Yet last episode, he goes out and do the stupid thing that basically kills the male lead and eventually the female lead and using very stupid military tactics to lose wars. So this whole character looks like he's somebody who lives out of a timeline. He is at any time randomly placed on his development timeline. There's no consistency, there's no logic of direction of development. You can say that in reality people are a lot more chaotic and they go one step forward, two step back in their whole life, fine. But dramas are not reality. Dramas basically is a condensed version of reality. It's an elevated, summarized, idealized and symbolic way of expressing reality. It, all characters are a symbol. They are archetypical sort of symbol of something. As a character, you actually have to have a clear logic and line of development. You're not making some experimental cinema. You're a very basic right, commercial product of a idol period drama. And you have this Rao who's so important and yet so unclearly written. His unclear line shows me that either the scriptwriter, if it's completely on her, then she wants too much. 
for this role. She wants to add so much tag and so much popular elements. The uh, Fumpi character, the crazy, the little bit psychotic and sexy and good looking young man. He has so many tags attached to him like a Christmas tree. And if not, then who is responsible? Classic situation might be that too many cooks in the kitchen, too many people want to have a hand manipulating this role, adding stuff to him that he doesn't need to have, thinking by having more screen time of this role that he will be more important, but actually it reduces the impact and the quality of the role. Yuan Lu, this character, doesn't have that much screen time, but everybody loved him and it has helped Chen Youwei so much. Technically speaking, the best way is to write a really good role, not having that much screen time, give more screen time to Yu Shizan and a couple of other people so that the whole story becomes even better and that will actually help this role, Li Tongguang, be more memorable. Unfortunately, they did the stupid thing of adding so much screen time on the character that actually dilutes his value, totally counterserves the purpose. And then another thing about this character on the performance level is, I truly do think they casted the wrong actor to play this role and he in the main actor's panel is the weakest one. Barely making sense for every moment to moment emotion of this role, let alone having layers and development line. He doesn't actually have a clean through line. I am at episode two of the story. I am at episode 20 of the story. I'm at episode 40 of this episode story. I need to be a different person at different stages of how I talk and act. And you need to have that clean understanding as an actor. He doesn't have that. He's like the same person throughout the whole drama. Now, given that the script is also unclear, but his acting doesn't help. For a very capable actor, they would be able to get the character and then rationalize it and then finding the points that it's not making sense and try to help the character become more logical. We've seen a lot of good actors who can do this. They get crappy script, but they make themselves the line clean. And you can argue the drama is a failure, but the audience is clearly can tell the actor is not. Think about Guardian, for example. A lot of problems with the story and completely crappy ending, yet you never hear anybody complain about Zhu Yilong and Bai Yu's performance of these two roles. And this actor professionally is just not good enough. And then he actually is not the suitable type of actor. So this is also on casting. We are not reading textbooks, we are looking at the visual and for drama it's so important to cast the suitable actress or actor for the role so that people have the least amount of cost from audience's perspective to understand who they are, what their functions are, immediately get into the story and not be bothered by I have to spend 10 episodes to get to know you. He is just so different from if you just look at on paper Li Tongguang's character, what he should show up like. I'd say the perfect actor to play this role would be somebody looking very youthful, very young because he's only 20 years old. Upon first look, innocent, almost bubbly and very sunshine and very positive energy young man and turn around, he actually has that dark and psychotic side. The beautiful boy who you think is a ray of sunshine but turns around and kills a bird. Immediately you get that energy kind of young actor would be the perfect choice for this role. And also if this actor can use his own voice to act. And you see how important actually for these roles in this drama where you can have the original voice of the actor. For example, He Landau, the beautiful switch she can do between pretending to be a young man to switching back to she's actually a young girl. And if it's not her voice, right, it'd be so much less effective and impressive. So for Li Tongguang, he gets dubbed. He's not the perfect type of actor who can play this role. And then on paper, this role has been written with so many problems. At the end of the drama, I'm literally holding my anger against this character because I just cannot believe that he can be such a stupid person. Episode 39, when he did a stupid thing that basically killed our two leads. And it's so unnecessary. It actually doesn't need to happen. And if you want to kill off the two leads, right, there are other ways to do it that will make more sense. And they also is forcing all the other roles to think of him so highly where he actually never proves he can do that. For example, at the end of the drama where basically Mel Lee sacrificed himself so that he can get saved. The lines he spoke to him as his last words is like, you have this responsibility, you know, you're kind of our hope for the two countries future peace and against the invaders, so you have to live. <laughs> I'm like, it's so out of character for Ning Yuan Zhou to say that. Also, it actually doesn't make logical sense because Li Tongguang by this point in the drama really hasn't achieved that much by himself. Even the assassination of his own country's emperor was done by his subordinate who never actually discussed with him. So this guy has no idea about how politics works, has little military geniuses, has all the psychological baggages he has and problems he has. Where has he ever proven that he's actually really capable and why then would female lead, male lead, all the other people in the two countries somehow by default assumes that he would be the perfect regent for the baby 
emperor of their country. He needs to be there. He needs to survive. We don't have a better choice. I'm like, really? So for the court of the An kingdom, there's not even one useful politician, one good premier, one good, I don't know, minister of whatever. Like they can't do any job. They have to rely on the 20 year old guy who can't do anything. And it's such a basic logical problem that all the other characters don't have in this drama, only Li Tongguang has. So if the conspiracy theory online, which totally doesn't make sense, saying that the whole drama is some kind of capital and money behind Liu Yuning trying to make him famous, which is laughable. I'd say if you have to argue that, then it might as well argue that actually it's this character or this actor who gets like support from somewhere that outside of the drama trying to manipulate and then make him more important than usual and necessary and actually completely counteracts and backfires on this character. You know, He Lando's role doesn't have that much screen time in comparison to Ren Ruyi, Ning Yuanzhou, Li Tongguang, yet she's my favorite. And she would be on the list of my favorite female roles now of Chinese Romland, on par with characters such as Ling Xi from Nirvana in Fire 2. So I think I've talked about everything good and bad, things I notice, things I doubt about, things I have problems about, and things I completely cannot accept about a journey to love within and without. Hope this video has been interesting enough and uh, if you've managed to stay till the very end, I highly, highly appreciate the time you've given to this video. We're at the end of 2023 now. Let's hope 2024 we can get um, idol pair drama that moves a little bit away from just idol pair drama. If we can get a similar thing, let's hope it can avoid mistakes, avoid the problems 2024. Let's hope we get at least one. <laughs> yeah, it's not hope for too much, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching, Amnivex. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.